What's going on? I'm Liz from Learn Robotics, and welcome to this episode of Learn Robotics with Liz, the show where I talk all things robotics and tech from the perspective of an engineer and share my thoughts on what I think you can do to learn more about tech and ultimately learn robotics. Stay tuned. We have an awesome episode for you here today. If you're watching on YouTube, consider subscribing to my channel or subscribing to the show on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. Ready? Let's get to it. All right, and we are back with another episode of Learn Robotics with Liz. I'm Liz from Learn Robotics, finally joining you guys on video. Hopefully you like this version of the podcast a little bit better. Another monologue, just wanted to address a question that I get asked kind of frequently with people that are more intermediate in robotics, people that are maybe one or two years into working with technology, maybe they are looking for a career change, they have some technical experience, maybe in a um, like a parallel type of field, whether that's electrical engineering or um, they're currently an electrician or they went to technical school, they went to trade school. Um, I get the question of, should I go to engineering college? So should I go to engineering school? That's question one. The second question is, should I go to a trade school? Question two. And the third question is, should I get an engineering master's degree or an advanced degree in engineering, like a PhD or some sort of higher level um, engineering degree? So I'm going to address those questions in this episode. If you are looking for career advice or you're interested in learning more about my thoughts from an engineering standpoint for where I think you would need these types of credentials, you're definitely going to want to listen to today's episode. Um, I'm going to speak from my personal experience, some of the things that I wish I had known going into engineering, going to engineering school. And some of the things that I maybe didn't realize once I got into industry working as an engineer in manufacturing and automation engineering, that would have been helpful had I had known that prior to going to engineering school. So all of that and more in today's episode. First things first, if you do like the show, be sure to subscribe so that you get notified for when new episodes like this one comes out. And if you find this information helpful or valuable, please share this with a friend. I'm trying to grow the Learn Robotics with Liz podcast. And if you have a friend that's interested in robotics or they're interested in engineering careers, then share this with them. It's completely free. You can use the Anchor URL, so anchor.fm slash learnrobotics, or use whatever podcasting platform you're listening to to share the show with a friend. I'd really appreciate it. If you find this information valuable, then they'll probably find this valuable as well. All right, so let's just jump right into it. So today we're going to talk first about trade school versus engineering school my thoughts on it. So I went to engineering school and I think really the only reason why I didn't go to trade school is because I was at the top of my class. So it was kind of like you don't go to like a two-year associate's degree when you're constantly getting, you know, 4.0s in every single class. It's just something that I never, it never was really presented to me as an option. And truthfully, I think if I had went out and, you know, wanted to go to a two-year school, you know, like for an associate's degree, like a community college or a trade school, people would have probably judged me a little bit weird for it, which I don't know if that's the case today. I think looking at it today, I have a completely different perspective on the whole education university system. But at the time when you're, you know, very smart and you're in all the AP classes, you're taking college classes in high school, a two-year degree really isn't on the table. Um, And that's just kind of my experience with this. Um, For other people, maybe the two-year degree is on the table, but it never really was for me. Or at least I wasn't looking for two-year programs. I was going to go right into engineering school. I knew it was going to be a four-year program. I was looking for bachelor degree programs and that whole engineering college experience. Now, looking back on it, it probably would have been wise to go to a two-year degree 
um, to go to a two-year degree program. From a financial standpoint, uh, there's some good cost savings there, but from a hands-on actually understanding how to physically wire something, so like an electrician program would be a really good option um, for engineering or like a mechanics kind of a program would be a really good option prior to go into engineering school. And I say this because they get a lot of real world experience and you get the sh the job shadowing, you get to work as an apprentice, you get to build up a lot of hands-on hours, working with people, working in the industry, gaining those hands-on technical skills that you just do not get in engineering school. Like, yes, we have lab activities, yes, we go and we build different things, but it's more of a research academic environment at a four-year uh, degree program versus an actual hands-on technical, like I know how to use, you know, this device, which this is a tape measure, everybody should know how to use this. But anyways, you're getting more hands-on information, you're getting more hands-on exposure and experience working in a pro like more professional environment in a two-year program than in a, like an engineering school where you're being more exposed to research, you're getting more face time with professors, you're getting more you know, research-oriented funding so if you're interested more in being hands-on and good at like working with something, you know, like working with tools and building things and solving problems in that way, then a two-year program is gonna give you a lot more experience than a four-year degree will. Uh, contrary to that though, if you are looking to get more into the research, the innovation, the, what I'd consider like the sophisticated robotics where you get like more of the artificial intelligence, more of the machine learning, more of like those breakthroughs in robotics, you're not gonna see that in a two-year degree program. You're, you'll need to get into a four-year degree program and then go way beyond. Um, so if your goal is to end up in robotics working on cutting edge research, then you're going to need to start in a four-year degree program or if you don't start in a four-year degree program, you're going to need to find yourself in a four-year degree program at some point in time. So you could do your two-year degree, you could get some industry experience, you could um, you know, go down that route, get really good at what you do, and then maybe you work at a company that allows you to go back and get a, a four-year degree somewhere. And then once you have that degree and you want to make that switch into more of like that research-oriented robotics, then you could you could look for PhD programs, you could look for master's programs that have more of those like core research areas, and that will help you kind of get into those labs and have those experiences. Second point, um, should I get a master's PhD in robotics? Same kind of answer as before, it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do cutting edge research, then yeah, you're going to need you know, to find one of those programs because unless you work for a startup and you have some, you somehow have acquired skills that they want, um, you're not really going to get exposed to some of the cutting edge lab equipment, the cutting edge grants, some of that stuff, unless you have connections with some, you know, major research facility, you know, at a top school. Not to say that some of the smaller schools don't have top research, but um, from a very high level, like if you want to be involved in some, like if you want to be involved in like uh, drones and like quad rotors and things like that, you're not going to want to go to, you know, like ABC school up the street. You're going to want to go to a university that has, you know, a lot of experience with that and bringing uh, grants in and doing a lot of research and, you know, being at the forefront of that technology. Um, so I, what I would recommend doing is kind of researching what area in robotics you want to end up in, find the people that run really good labs, and then see what they have in terms of degrees. A lot of times if you have a bachelor's degree and you are, you're super into being, you know, in the cutting edge area of robotics, you'd apply into a PhD program and then you'd pick up a master's along the way you wouldn't necessarily apply into a master's program unless you had no intentions of going beyond that. But if your end goal is to get a PhD, then you just apply directly into the PhD program and then you just, over time, over your next like 
I don't know, six years in school, you would somehow acquire that master's degree, which would eventually lead to you getting your PhD. So those, that's kind of like a very high level roadmap of how you could go about doing it. Now, if you have zero intensive working in a lab or being like a senior fellow of, you know, robotics, whatever, um, then you, you probably don't need the master's degree. You probably don't need the PhD. Um, you may want the master's degree, but my recommendation is uh, for most people, a four year engineering degree is going to do a lot of good. Once you get that four-year engineering degree, if it's in robotics or if it's in a related field, then you can go get some work experience as an engineer. And if you somehow had a two-year associate's degree before that, you're going to be way ahead of all of the engineers just because you understand kind of how you know a mechanic or an electrician works with an engineer in industry. If you're looking at en- if you're looking at engineering jobs from a I guess, corporate standpoint, from a factory standpoint, um, you're going to have kind of a better understanding of how all of that lines up. But what I would recommend is getting that experience as an engineer. You know, you get your bachelor's degree, then you go get some, you know, corporate or, you know, factory style job as an engineer. And then hopefully the company you're working at has opportunities for school improvement or continuing education or something like that. And if you wanted to get, you know, more degrees or more schooling or more credentials, you could just go back to school under whatever their program allows. And some of them allow uh, master's degrees. And so master's degrees are kind of a nice way for you to be able to uh, really just kind of elevate your knowledge from one standpoint, but also you know, not necessarily have the financial risk of taking out the loans and going back to school. And two, when you finish that program, a lot of times the organizations will um, reward you by either promoting you or, you know, moving you up um, either from a salary standpoint or from a job title standpoint. So it's a great way to kind of keep your career progressing um, in a way that, you know, you put in the work uh, through the through the degree. You put in the time. You did the the projects. You went back. Um, now you have a master's degree, so now you have more credentials. So now you are you should know more. Therefore, you should be more valuable. So instead of you you know spending let's say the next decade in the same role, you could go back get a master's degree, and that could significantly shorten the amount of time it takes for you to get that promotion to the next level. And that would be kind of my only recommendation for using schooling to help you significantly grow and move your trajectory of where you're going to end up in your career. So just as a quick recap, uh, really the main goal is to, one, figure out where you want to end up. So if your goal is to be in research, then you're probably going to need a PhD. You're going to need to figure out a way to at least get a bachelor's degree and then find whatever PhD program you want to get into, whoever's lab or whichever area. Um, you know, reach out to that person that runs that lab that manages that particular program and try to get in with them pretty early. And then once you get into that PhD program, then you can pick up your master's along the way, and then you'll be pretty much good to go for that particular route. Um, alternative route number two is to just start out in technical school go to go get a two-year associate's degree in some sort of technical trade like become an electrician become a mechanic um, do one of those types of hand-on hands-on programs where there's some sort of like apprenticeship or hands-on number of hours you need and then once you get some experience you do some work for a company go back to school you could pick up a bachelor's degree and then go from there. You can choose kind of whichever direction you want to move in. I think that's a really great option. You'll learn a, a lot of information, definitely a lot more information, and you'll have a lot more hands-on hours than people that just go to engineering school. Um, a lot of the, the work that you'll need to do as somebody that just goes to engineering school right out of high school, you're going to have to pick up on the job because there are a lot of skills they just don't teach you in engineering school. They don't teach you any of like that insider stuff that maybe you would learn um, on an apprenticeship or on on the job style training. So that's something to keep in mind. And then kind of the last 
option is to just jump right in, jump right into a four year degree program in engineering and then kind of sort out what other what other competencies you need later. And, you know, take some extra trainings. You can you can find a number of professional development courses. And a lot of times the companies that you work for will compensate you or they'll pay directly for those types of courses because they want you to be fresh. They want you to have the, the knowledge that you need to perform well. So those would be kind of the three the three ways of getting degrees and how I would tackle those scenarios. Um, you can always, you know, build kind of your own path. It's kind of nice to go back from where you want to end up at the very end to where you are currently and then figure out kind of what the next logical step might be. From my experience, um, you, you don't need to go to school. Like, you definitely don't need to go get a PhD if you just want to work as an engineer in a factory or you just want to work as an engineer at a startup. You don't need that much schooling. You'd only really want to do that as if, one, you really like schooling and you really like research, um, or two, you want to be part of some particular project that they're researching at a very sophisticated lab, which is very valid. A lot of people like that. Um, or three, you just don't feel like going to work. I, I don't really know. I think it's one of those things where um, a lot of a lot of times personal preference would come into the picture, but you don't need as much schooling as you might think you need to get into engineering. It's really just the four-year degree is kind of like that center mark, and anything before that is going to get you kind of more technical skills, more hands-on knowledge and experience, and anything after that is going to get you more um, what I'd consider sophisticated, like, uh, I don't know, more thought-provoking, theoretical kind of robotics, which, which is great if you plan on going into research. So that's my recommendation from there. If you have any questions about this episode, feel free to leave a comment or submit your questions via audio using the Anchor FM message feature. You can go to anchor.fm slash learnrobotics and leave me a message and you just might be featured on an upcoming episode of Learn Robotics with Liz. If you did like this episode, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and share this with a friend. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.